Now for your board, you need to get this remounted here so people know where it is. Spent hours looking for this sign. I came on the wrong path. Fool that I am. So I know you got lots of priorities, but it'd be nice if you could do it for us all. So after much chewing and throwing and paths here, then everywhere. Numerous rests. I've actually spotted some buildings, so I'm hoping I've got to be walking towards them. That's the plan anyway. Moves into view as they say. Just beyond the foot though. All these rhododendrons here, there and everywhere. Or as I imagine they're escapees from the Glen Helen planting. It's certainly changed since the last time I saw it. It's ten years ago. Ten years of my life gone. Like a flash. So there she is, sitting in the trees. It's not as overgrown as the last time I was here. So I may be able to see a bit more of it. Folks, a picture of some people standing inside the quirks in 1904. Not a very good picture, but I'll tag it in with this, then you'll know where they were standing. I think one of the lads standing there was uh, Freddie Quirk, Freddie Quirk's father. There's some famous butchers in Peel called Woods, it was Stanley and Edward. Uh, they had this area in 1946, about 350 acres under the belt and some branches and I think Peel and Bud Aaron, renowned butchers. Anyway, there must have been some um, problems after the war about food supply. And um, they got uh, arrested for slaughtering, illegally slaughtering three cows and selling the meat. And um, it must have been quite a serious case because they got fined £110 in 1946. And that today is like 4,000 quid. So punishment was meted out fair and square those days. Fair and square. Okay, so. Going for a trip around there. Uh, Here he veg with me. Have a seat after that. Sort of brought me flash with me today. Cleared up a fair bit since the last time I was here. Little bits of treasure here and there. This won't do any harm. No 
old axle. Wonder what that is, I think. Bogey a car, binding it. An old Victorian gate. See all the intricate details. Not just a gate. I remember that bit there. And there was no roof when I was here last time. Now I reckon this must have been here from when it was from the 1900s, maybe earlier. Can you imagine Billy Quirk? There's ten kids in this little place, eh? Just by the fireplace, there would be plenty of heat though. So it was a bit jerky for you. Walking over these things is not as easy as it used to be for me. This would have been scurry. Lots of little rooms in here. Place. It definitely wouldn't be cold in here in the winter time. As the next word is for the chalig. Chalig indeed. A fireplace upstairs in this place, in this side though. This is the other side. The old wood, the old wood lintel is beginning to give away. I suppose once that fails, the chimney will come down. Still see some of the Roof trusses on the ground here. Yes. You can still see some roof trusses. Well, since gone now. So there's a upstairs chimney, upstairs fireplace too, in this one. A little bit of red mortar, I see it, on the right hand wall. Must have been so much better one day, mustn't it? All the memories that we in this place. Unbelievable. Mrs. Quirk would walk out to the door, open it, and ask you in for a cup of tea. And after you hike up from wherever you were or the work you're doing, you'd be very grateful for that cup of tea. No uh, exterior buildings left much, I'm afraid. This may have been a car shed or something similar. Not sure what this little place here would have been. Also the toilet, although they usually detached it from the sheds. Animals can see things we can't see. Something's bugging her anyway. That's something you want to heard in Billy Quirk's day. The sound of a jet plane overhead. Maybe the White Brothers. As I said, uh, Mr. Kane owned this in 1938 and he had another auction. Bought the whole thing a year before he died for 10 grand, tried to offload it later on in the early 50s, early, late after that Mrs Gregson bought it and she was trying to sell it too for about 15 grand in the late 50s or early 40s as I say and then uh, after the scramble course the forestry board took it over never sure whether they actually owned all of the Glen Helen or just the farm didn't actually find that out, so I can't really be sure about that one. Anyway, I'm going to have a bit of a poke around now because uh, um, I haven't actually studied it in great detail. I'll take some close-ups, make something of it. But it's definitely not hard to get to. Park a car and go to Helen Car Park. Take the path up, go up the first path, carry it up a bit, and then take uh, one on the right. Yeah, straight along. You'll get to it. Definitely worth visiting. Definitely. So as you leave, very uh, vague. 
a few things to ponder on that I found out when I was doing a bit of search the other night on the web, as you do. As I was saying, a few things to ponder on in the 1740s or 50s census. There's 14,000 people living in the Isle of Man. I suppose that's what, 400 years ago? And although 14,000 people, 2,500 lived in the towns. The rest were what they called uh, rural. All these town people have got monuments to their life. Here, there, and everywhere. But to the rural world, which is not just leaving, there's not one marker of these old ruins going to be protected. And unless you would take pictures of them or videos of them like I'm doing, our kids and their kids will never see these places. Because nature will very quickly take over take it back. And I would hate to see them forgotten about. So the spirits of them places do need to be remembered. So if you're going to do a visit, don't put it off. She said I've done three books on Fultons. And those three books, I think, most of them are gone. 140 Thaltons in the histories and bits and pieces as well. 22 now don't exist. So you've already lost the chance to see 22 of them. And the only thing we've got is photographs of them. Can't actually visit them, they've just disappeared. 